Because the other thing I see as a clinician, and I, I think this is very characteristic of clinical experience and also very much described explicitly by the great clinicians, is that what cures in therapy is truth. That's the curative. Now, there's exposure to the things you're afraid of and avoiding as well, but I would say that's a form of enacted truth because if you know there's something you should do by your own set of rules and you're avoiding it, then you're enacting a lie. You know, you're not telling one, but you're acting one out. It's the same damn thing. So, if I can get you to face what it is that you're confronting that you know you shouldn't be avoiding, then what's happening is that we're both partaking in the process of attempting you to act out your deepest truth. And what happens is that that improves people's lives. And it improves them radically. And the evidence, the clinical evidence for that is overwhelming. We know that if you expose people to the things they're afraid of, but that they're avoiding, they get better. And you have to do it carefully and cautiously and with their own participation and all of that. But of all the things that clinicians have established that's credible, that's number one. And that's nested inside this deeper realization that the clinical experience is redemptive, let's say, because it, it's designed to address suffering insofar as the people who are engaged in the process are both telling each other the truth. And then you think, well, obviously, because if, if you have some problems and you come to talk to me about them, well, first of all, just by coming to talk to me about them, you've admitted that they exist. Man, that's a pretty good start. And second, well, if you tell me about them, then we know what they are. And then if we know what they are, we can maybe start to lay out some solutions and then you can go act out the solutions and see if they work. But if you don't admit they're there and you won't tell me what they are, and I don't, and I'm like posturing and, and, and acting egotistically and, and taking the upper hand in all of that in our discussions, well, how the hell is that going to work? You know, it might be comfortable moment to moment while we stay encapsulated in our delusion, but it's not going to work. So a lot of that seems, if you think it through, it seems pretty self-evident. And, you know, Freud thought that repression was at the heart of much mental suffering. The difference between repression and deception is a matter of degree, and that's all. It's technical. It's a technical differentiation. And Alfred Adler, who was one of Freud's greatest associates, let's say, and much underappreciated, I would say, he thought that people got into problems because they started to act out a life lie. That's what he called it, a life lie. That's worth looking up because Adler, although not as charismatic as Freud, was very practical and, and, and really foreshadowed a lot of later developments in cybernetic theory. And of course, Jung believed that you could bypass psychotherapy entirely by merely making a proper moral effort in your own life. And Carl Rogers believed that it was honest communication mediated through dialogue that had redemptive consequences and the behaviors believe that you do a careful microanalysis of the problems that are laid before you and help introduce people to what they're avoiding. It's like all of those things to me are just secular variations of the notion that truth will set you free essentially.